Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this special broadcast. My name is Dylan Hosier, and I am the CEO of ICANN, the Israeli American Civic Action Network. Uh, today, we are doing a very special broadcast uh, highlighting uh, Holocaust history and remembrance from Lithuania. I want to thank our partners, uh, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and I also want to thank um, Dr. Ephraim Zurov, who is one of our uh, board members uh, on our Holocaust Advisory Council. So thank you, Ephraim, for your work. Uh, I want to acknowledge you. And, and without you, we wouldn't um, be where we are today in terms of uh, addressing this issue. So thank you. So again, Simon Wiesenthal Center, fantastic partner, uh, the Cape Town Holocaust and Genocide Center, the Lithuanian Jewish Community, and Stephen S. Weiss Temple. Uh, today, we will have uh, several special guests. First is Faina Kuklianski, the chair of the Lithuanian Jewish community in Lithuania. Uh, her family was from Shaolay uh, district and was and her family uh, was murdered by uh, Jonas Norika, who we have mentioned several times in the past. Uh, with us also is Dudu Fisher. Uh, he is one of Israel's greatest stars. His family was also from the Chalet district, uh, and his family also was murdered by Jonas Noreka. Uh, we have with us also is Shulamit Rabinovich. She's an engineer from San Francisco. Her family also was from Chalet. It was also murdered by Jonas Noreka. And with us, as always, is Grant Goshen. Uh, he's an American. Uh, his family also was from the Chalet district and was also murdered by Jonas Noreka and Sylvia Foti, uh, an ethnic Lithuanian descended from the Chalet district. Her grandfather was the murderer, uh, Jonas Noreka. Um, I also want to emphasize that today the government of Lithuania was repeatedly invited to participate. Uh, in fact, we invited 10 separate members of the government. Um, we sent the invitation by mail, email, and by internet posts, and they have ignored the request and remain resolute that the honors they have accorded to many murderers of Jews uh, have been honored as Lithuanian national heroes are not to be revoked. Um, we will have a empty chair on screen, the whole program in, in the Lithuanian flag. All right, um, so today, just to kind of overview the, the topic, um, again, the government of Lithuania has declared Sylvia's grandfather a secret rescuer of Jews. They have absolved him of all crimes and declared him a great national hero to be emulated by Lithuanian youth alongside many other Lithuanians who murdered Jews and were similarly honored. Um, you can uh, please see the letter we wrote to Lithuanian government on screen. So we will show that to you on the screen later. Uh, there were never Nuremberg style trials for Lithuanians that murdered Jews. In fact, Lithuania subverted any such possibility. They have revised history and declared murderers to be rescuers. They have parties on top of mass death pits. They use their murdered Jews as a marketing tool to promote themselves. And this is deeply painful for all de decent people and descendants of those who were murdered. That Lithuania has so comprehensively rewritten history shows the world that mass perpetrators can escape culpability. Uh, Russia and Belarus are currently engaged in a hybrid war against Lithuania and expect no accountability because the fact that Lithuania has so engaged in so much Holocaust denial lays the path for Russia and Belarus to also uh, rewrite history. Lithuania has inverted all human rights norms. Their opponents expect to be able to do the same. Uh, Lithuania complains that the Soviet Union killed 14 Lithuanians on Bloody Sunday, but forgives Noreka for murdering in excess of 14,000 Lithuanian citizens. Uh, who just happened to be Jews. In rewriting history, I wonder if a Lithuanian citizen today who murdered 220,000 Lithuanian citizens, would the government of Lithuania today declare those murderers national heroes, or does that just apply to those who murdered Jews? If we wish to protect all peoples from mass human rights atrocity crimes, we need to start by establishing the truth about past crimes. No decent person can pay attention to Lithuanian government representations when we know that they are one of the worst offenders of past century uh, and the worst offender of historical truth uh, inversion in Europe right now. Uh, so today we are going to show some uh, images here from the, here we go. So um, this is this is a table that we are uh, discussing, this chess table. Um, today's conversation revolves around a simple chess table, this simple chess table here on screen. Um, I would like to open today's conversation by asking Sylvia to talk about how she discovered the table and its meaning. Uh, Sylvia, welcome. So Hello, Sylvia, I'll let, you, I'll let you go ahead and, and describe the, uh, the table and its history. 
Yes. Hi. Hi, Dylan. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, the year is 1941, and that was the year my grandfather was leading the rebellion against the communists. He was also working with Germany as Germany was coming into Lithuania with Operation Barbarossa, and that was also the launch of the Holocaust in Lithuania. I was told that at that time, my grandfather had no idea what was happening in Plunge, which was the headquarters of the uprising in Jamaitia or the lowlands, and that my grandfather had no idea that his men uh, were acting independently in killing the Jews. So um, what I discovered, though, completely contradicted that. And I had learned that my grandfather moved into a house in Plunge that was suddenly left free. And by left free, it was left free by the Jews because the Jews were either murdered. Most of them were murdered. And a few of them were lucky enough to flee into the Soviet Union. And the house that he moved into for about a month was um, the Orleansky house. And uh, my grandfather loved to play chess. All my relatives in Lithuania always talked to me about how much he loved to play chess. And so um, there was a chess table that my grandfather had uh, that apparently came from this Orleansky home. And that chess table ended up in uh, one of my aunt's homes in Chaule. And so he had taken this table from Plunge, the Orleansky home in Plunge, and took it with him into Chole uh, in about August 1941 when he became chairman of the district in Chole. So this table, the fact that we found this table is, is a little bit of a miracle. It's the one of the few things that remains from 1941. Of course, the Jews that were murdered do not remain, but the table that my grandfather took over remains. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. So now we're going to add uh, Shulamit Rabinovich. Shulamit, thank you for joining us. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, uh, now that Sylvia has shared her uh, connection to this chess table um, and, and we've brought you into the stream, would you mind sharing what is your, your maiden name? My maiden name is Orlansky, and the picture you see on the screen is my grandmother, Rachel Orlansky. Wow. So, uh, so this is the the Orlansky family, just as Sylvia described it. That's right. Wow. Can Can you please tell us a little bit about your family and and Plunge and and how your father survived? Uh, well. Uh, my grandparents got married about 120 years ago and uh, settled in Plunge uh, on the right next door to synagogue because my grandfather was a rabbi and a scholar. Uh, and that was uh, 120 years ago. And then uh, 80 years ago, when the war started, uh, my father, Leo Orlansky, he was on business in Riga, and uh, on the day when the war started in the morning, he mm, was on the street and didn't even understand first what was happening. He tried to get back to Plunge, but it was impossible. The army was moving to the, to the east, and he was swept away back into Russia. That, that, that's how he survived. Uh, right. And that's uh, thanks to that. I'm, I'm here. Uh, the descendants uh, of uh, the Orlansky family now live all over the world, including United States. Uh, but hey. my grandmother, uh, her daughters, and her grandchildren uh, they all were murdered. Uh, they are um, murdered in Kaushene, in the forest uh, uh, near uh, Plunge. Uh, there is a memorial right now there. Uh, it is built from 1,800 bricks uh, because there are 1,800 Jews 
of Plungia who were murdered there. Sylvia, would you mind um, sharing us a little bit more deeply how your family is connected to Shulamit's family? Yes, um, that house that uh, my grandfather took over, um, its location is critical because it really does prove that he was very deeply involved in killing Jews in Plunga, that it wasn't like he was somewhere else and it wasn't like there's no way he would know because that house is practically across the street from the police station. And that police station is like the biggest building in Plunga, the most prominent structure in Plunga, and that ended up being the Nazi headquarters at that time. And my grandfather was commandantas of the Jemaitia area. And uh, his secretary, who was a live witness, wrote a memoir, uh, Pakalnishkis wrote a memoir, memoir called Plunga, and in that memoir, he writes about my grandfather giving the order to kill all of the Jews in Plunga. And so before they were killed, they were brought into a synagogue. And that synagogue is uh, practically right next to this house. And so there's no way not to have heard the screams and, you know, how they were tortured and the terrible things that um, those poor Jews had to go through. And so for the short time that they were in the synagogue, if they survived, they were taken out of the synagogue and marched into the Koshene woods and shot there. So the synagogue has been taken down since then. And uh, as Shulamit explained, the bricks there are part of a memorial in Koshene. And I was there in Koshene in 2013 when I was researching all this. And I was there in July uh, 12, July 12, 13, which is kind of the, the dates that most of them were murdered. So my grandfather was there at that time in Plunga, in the house of Orleansky, next to the synagogue, across to the street of the um, Nazi command center, and he was the commandantas. Great, thank you. So, so what I'd like to do now is bring on uh, Dudu Fisher. So Dudu, I'm gonna bring you on. Dudu, thank you so much for joining us and for being Welcome. here with us this, this morning and this evening. I, I know it's in the evening, your time. Um, so hearing hearing this story um, and hearing what you've heard so far, uh, first of all, can you tell us who was the murderer of your family and, and what is your impression of what you have heard uh, so far? Well, I understand today I know much more than I knew uh, a year ago. And I understand that Nureka was uh, the one, I don't know if, they, if he killed them with his bare hands, but I know that uh, all my uh, mother's uncles and uh, cousins were murdered in the streets of Shaolei. Uh, by, but wh why you talk to me? Talk to my mother. Here's my mother. Here's my mother. She's gonna be 90 in January, and maybe she can she can tell you more. Ima. No, tell them how many your your grandmother, how many how many grandchildren she had. My grandfather, mother had 15 grandchildren when she when she left to Lithuania. In Lithuania, she left the night. Your grandmother left Lithuania? Left for Yalcha? Well, she says that her grandmother uh, walked from uh, Shaolei to Riga uh, by foot. And uh, from what I heard uh, from people uh, whom I met, uh, 30 years ago and 35 years ago, I, I, there are witnesses that uh, my um, ancestors, my, my mother's uh, uh, uncles, uh, were killed in the streets of Shaolei by Lithuanians. Um, that's all. We don't know. We don't have the names. We, don't, we, really, really, we really don't have any more information about it. All we know that they were murdered in Riga um, and today I understand that, uh, that uh, 
uh, I know who was the who gave the order to just kill them in the streets. Well, thank thank you for sharing that, um, and thank you also to your Ima for uh, for joining us and and, and speaking with us uh, today. Thank you. Um, and and so next we'll we'll bring up uh, uh, Faina Kuglanski, the chair of the Jewish community in Lithuania. Uh, Faina, thank you so much uh, for joining us this today. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Good evening. Absolutely. So good evening. Good evening, um, Faina. Uh, can you please tell us where your family was from in Lithuania? And, and also who, who you know murdered them? Yeah, so my mother was from Chile. Uh, my father was from absolutely different place uh, in the south of Lithuania, in BC, and not far away from the place where uh, they used to live, uh, was murdered his mother, my grandmother, Zinaida Kuklanski, who was a doctor. As regards to Chile, um, my very big family uh, used to live in Shole. They had a meal and um, were not only brothers, sisters of my grandfather, but uh, sure their children. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, after the war, survived only my grandparents, my mother, and one sister. All the other members of the family were killed. You know, I do not know uh, all the circumstances how they were killed. I know what happened with my mother who was a child in the beginning of the war. She was 10 years old and she was closed into the ghetto and after that uh, she was transported to the Stutthof concentration camp and uh, for sure, he, she lost uh, uh, four years of uh, normal childhood. Uh, uh, that is uh, absolutely clear. On the other hand, um, dear Dylan, I wouldn't uh, accuse all the Lithuanians uh, uh, for what happened during the Second World War. Uh, sure. First of all, and I could not agree that no one of them uh, under do understand what happened, and not everybody is denying the Holocaust, and um, uh, 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 not everybody is um, uh, minimizing the role of a Holocaust. So we have sure. a lot of supporters between the Lithuanians. So uh, I'm really very proud today to meet uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Shulamit uh, Rabinovich um, Orlanski. I'm very happy to meet her. I'm very happy to meet all other people and sure Sylvia Forti. And um, for me, it's a very big honor to uh, at all to participate uh, this um, uh, this interview and to act uh, uh, in the future to do something with, to to make a program project with this uh, uh, table, which is really one of symbols. Uh, uh, of what left uh, uh, from our Jewish community in Shavu. I can tell you in Shavu, I read the Yiddish a bit, so the middle from the Shavu. In Yiddish, we we call it Shavu, not Shavu. Uh, but you know, we do not have any artifacts. Uh, I have one photograph which left from my uh, Shavler family, and we got it from somebody abroad. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it as well. I'm not talking about all other things which just disappeared as all the life and uh, all the properties and everything, everything at all. So uh, to find such a table, it's really a treasure. And uh, to, uh, to be able to use it in, in the right purpose, 
it's really uh, a very big honor and i think it's a very very important uh, uh, important way of education not only jewish children who always also um, uh, are forgetting about the war because nobody tells them about it or, or not enough tells them but it's very important for education uh, uh, young people lithuanians young lithuanian people uh, to show actually uh, uh, this table and to explain what happened with uh, the jews during the world war in shaulei we were talking about uh, Plunge. You know, we are commemorating now 80 years of the beginning of the war, and I'm traveling from one place to another. I do not know even how many places I visited, but tomorrow I'm going, for example, to Shake. And it does not matter how many Jews they killed, uh, 2,000 or 2,500. They killed everybody whom they found in this city. If they did not kill, so those people who survived in the first half of the war, they were de delivered to the Gethos, Shaulai, Vilnius, and uh, Kaunas, and after that to the concentration camp. That was the destiny of all our Jews. And uh, such people as uh, Mrs. Shulamit or me, uh, we uh, survived by accident. Uh, we should not be alive. It wasn't in the plans. So, so, Fa so Fa Faina, thank you so much for uh, for that uh, commentary. I, I appreciate that, and I think our viewers will appreciate it as well. Um, and thank you, everybody, to who's watching. If you have questions, please go ahead and submit them. We'll we'll bring them on the screen as we go through the program. I want to bring on Grant Gosha now. Grant, can you please tell us where your Lithuanian family is from and who murdered them? Thank you, Dylan. Um, my family was also from the Shaolay district and the murderer of my relatives was primarily Jonas Noreka. Um, I would just like to, to echo some of the words of uh, Mrs. Kukuyansky. The majority of Lithuanians are good, fine, decent people. The majority of Lithuanians do not want this Holocaust revision has been going on. Um, the majority of Lithuanians are absolutely horrified by the current situation. And I'm very grateful to everybody that's on this program today for educating about the current situation. And, and to Chairwoman Kuklianski, who will, who will shortly tell us the education program that she's devised. Um, but simply the, the answer to the question you asked is my family was primarily murdered by Jonas Noreka and, and uh, his Lithuanian collaborators. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Um, Dudu, we want to go back to you. Um, we have a trailer for Baltic Truth. Um, would you mind, I, I, if, if you're able to, just to give us a little bit of a um, an introduction to this movie before we play the trailer? Did you did you ask me? Yes, Dudu. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> are, you, so are you able I, to do that? If you're able, if you're able to do that, that'd be great. I, I was approached by uh, Eugene Levine um, to do a song to, because they found a song which was uh, sang in the uh, in the Riga ghetto. And um, I sang the song and uh, a couple of weeks later, they said to me, why don't you come and be the narrator of the movie? And uh, I was really honored to do it because I felt that uh, uh, this is the best way to learn uh, about the history of my family. Uh, my mother was born in Riga and um, uh, for me, it was like a, a, an amazing experience, amazing experience to do this, uh, this uh, movie, uh, to sing the, the song uh, for, that we found uh, from the ghetto, uh, that Eugene found it. And uh, for, me, for me, it was like a, a, a Masa, how do you say Masa, Masa, a, a journey into history 
of the Jewish people and my family. And um, I, I came back a different person, I have to tell you. I, w I spent a week there, uh, very in, in, in a bitter cold weather, and to go from place to place and to find all those so-called heroes, Lit Lithuanians and, Li and Latvians, uh, and to learn about what they really did that nobody, nobody speaks about, nobody wants to know about. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's uh, for me, it was an amazing experience. Um, of course, uh, I came back, I sat with my mother and uh, we saw we saw the trailer of the movie and uh, she was also very, very, very deeply emotional, uh, moved mm -hmm. by this. So um, I can't wait to see the final product, and uh, and I think that this is going to be an amazing, amazing educational uh, movie, and uh, really what Eugene Levine did uh, uh, was uh, an amazing, amazing project. All right, so let's uh, thank you, Dudu. I uh, appreciate that that uh, summary. And we will go ahead now and let's check out the trailer. Give me one second here to pull it up. And let's do uh, do. I, I just want to make sure. Can you all hear the the audio? You can hear the audio. No, no. You cannot hear the audio. We can only see the pictures. You can only see the picture. Okay, stand by one second. Let me just fix this real. Quick. No, 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 Dylan, you can't see the audio. I mean, can't hear the audio. All right, one, one second, guys. This is always a challenge. Hold on one second. This is what you get with live TV. Share audio. Let's try this one more time. Now? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, here we go. The Lithuanian government made a promulgation and announcement. Don't shoot Jews openly. Please take them into a backyard somewhere, but don't shoot them openly. July 18, 1941, 175 people were executed right here, along with uh, 19 members of my family. Women were undressed right here, you know, robbed of their jewelry. Some men had their noses and ears cut off. This monument was erected by the surviving family members of the Jewish community in the late 50s. And only 50 feet away, under those little white crosses, the executioners of Aknis, the Jews, are buried as heroes. The, the propaganda was Jews are communists, or Jews are Bolsheviks, and consequently, you have a right to kill them. Everybody who was anti-Soviet was a hero. And nobody had time or energy to look for what he did in 41. Base, this porno, will военным преступником. Willis Tunkelis, he was to blame for the killing of the family of Eugene Levine. 
With the intention to understand what is going wrong with history these days, we have visited cities and towns in Latvia, Lithuania and Belarus that were notorious for the multiple instances of serious crimes against humanity during the Second World War. 10,000 Jews were murdered, men, women and children, with machine guns. They shot them. The shooters, by the way, were the Lithuanians. The Einsatzgruppen killed a million and a half Jews in about 18 months, face to face. Um, Dylan, may I interject? Dylan? Yep, go ahead. Go ahead, Grant. Okay. Um, it's a very powerful trailer. I, at, at the beginning of the trailer, there is a, a Mr. Gotts that says Lithuanians were told not to murder Jews so publicly. Um, that instruction was issued by the Lithuanian interim prime minister, Brazaitis, who, like Sylvia's grandfather, has been um, converted into a national Lithuanian hero. Uh, the government of Lithuania actually misused and fraudulently, deceptively misinterpreted uh, US congressional documents, saying that they meant something completely different to what they mean um and use that to declare Brazitis innocent of all crimes um congress has actually complained to the lithuanian prime minister and recently to the lithuanian ambassador that u.s congressional documents may not be used for um holocaust fraud by the lithuanian government and the Lithuanian government simply called one of the leaders of the U.S. Um, Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, just a politician, dismissed him and are sticking with, with their misinterpretation. So that was Mr. Gotts that was, was speaking first. Um, anyway, back, back to you, Dylan. All right. So, well, Grant, uh, I want to bring it back to you, actually, and thank you for, for explaining that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you came into possession of the table that we're talking about today? Yes. Um, I read Sylvia's book. Um, outstanding book. Absolutely outstanding book. And in her chapter 34, she talks about this table. And it was shocking. Uh, you know, uh, Lithuania is littered with, with Holocaust plunder. Um, you know, periodically silver comes on the market and it's obvious that the silver is, is stolen Holocaust property. And um, I, I managed to purchase the table from uh, Sylvia's aunt, um, which also shows that Lithuanians are still selling Holocaust plunder and living off the proceeds. Um, so once I was the legal owner of this table, I certainly wasn't the moral owner of the table. Um, and this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a, a <clears throat> excuse me, this is a primary piece of, of Holocaust uh, evidence denied by the government of Lithuania. I sought out the real owner. I wanted to return the table to the real owner. 
And uh, a friend of mine, an investigator by the name of Dina Gold, uh, alerted me to the fact that there was a possibility that a member of the Orlianski family had survived. So we started looking and I traced down Shlomit, who was very suspicious when I first, when I first approached her. And I said to her, Shlomit, you are the legal owner of this table. And Shlomit was, was rightfully quite taken aback and um, said, no, it, it, it needed to be used for education. Um, I wanted to ensure that the table was protected. I, I was nervous about taking it out of Lithuania because this is now a piece of Holocaust evidence. So the safest path was to keep it in Lithuania. And so we've given, I have given legal ownership or, sorry, I have given the table on permanent loan to a museum in Lithuania. And Chairwoman Kuklianski has agreed to use the table in a Holocaust education program. Um, can I can I say something? I, I just wanted to say, uh, Grant, I'm so happy that the table is outside of my family. It should have never been there in the first place. And I'm so happy that um, it's getting its rightful place. I cannot express how sorry I am. It's not just this table that ended up in my uh, family, but of everything that my grandfather did to your family, Grant, to Faina, to Shulamit, to Dudu. Um, it is something that I, I live with and it's a heavy burden for me. Um, I'm embarrassed and I feel an enormous amount of shame for what Lithuania is doing. And I'm uh, appalled that the government is still keeping uh, my grandfather and others like him as a hero in Lithuania. So at least this table can talk. The Jews that were murdered cannot talk, but at least this table can talk and be a witness uh, to what happened. Sylvia, Dylan, may I interject, please? Dylan? Yep, go ahead, yeah. Okay, Sylvia, you have nothing to apologize for. Jews reject the concept of heritage guilt. You are an out and out hero for having brought this to the world's attention and for being one of the very few in the world that have told truth. The, 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 you, you, Sylvia, you have zero guilt. Make absolutely no mistake about that. Those that have the guilt, because there is guilt right now, those that have the guilt are members of the government of Lithuania who are perpetrating these Holocaust deceptions. They are the ones that are committing a crime today in deceiving and calling the murderers of my family their national heroes. That is a current crime. You, Sylvia, have no guilt and you, Sylvia, have nothing to apologize for because you have done nothing wrong. Please know that from a Jewish perspective, there is no such thing as heritage guilt. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. And, and Faina, I'm, I'm glad you uh, spoke up. Oh, um, Grant uh, Dylan, and Faina. Dylan Shlamit wants to say something. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, Shulamit. Shulamit, to go second, ahead. To second Grant. Uh, after the war, my, my father and his brother uh, had enough courage to go back to Plungi and raise families. They grew up in Plungi. I remember it quite well. So in 2019, I took my daughter and grandson to Lithuania. And um, Lithuania is covered by memorials. Uh, our guide, uh, Lithuanian, was absolutely great. And uh, I listened to conversations he had to other Lithuanians. And everybody is trying to 
come to grips and understand and comprehend what have happened, what happened. It's very difficult. It is. Uh, we shouldn't judge. And definitely uh, there is no uh, guilt. It's just what, I, what I'd like to add, our family survived. Uh, descendants live uh, in South Africa and Mexico and United States and Israel, and we're thriving. However, there are some families uh, which were completely wiped out. There are no survivors, no survivors. And uh, that's why it's extremely important to me to uh, have the stable as a symbol, the families that were completely wiped out that did not survive, and uh, to Joseph Plunge. Uh, so uh, if we can, could, could looking at this table and remembering what have happened, remember the ones who perished with no survivors at all. That's all. Thank you, Thank you Shulamit. That's, uh, that's very, very powerful, very powerful comments. Um, Grant. Yes. Um, if if you would like to um, now um, discuss with Faina, I think did you want to announce the, well, the program? Uh, before before Faina announces the program, um, this is now the most famous chess table in the world, and we were very honored to have uh, the comments. I, I Dylan, let why, why don't you why don't you share the comments that we received, and then ask Faina to describe the education program she's devised. All right, so so I want to um, so I want to first say that this is a a uh, video message from Mr. Dvorko, Dvorkovic, uh, who is the president of the World Chess Federation. Is that correct, Grant? Correct. Okay, good. Wow. All right. I'm not a chess pro, so <laughs> I have to make sure I get that correct. All right. So here is a, a video message from Mr. Dvorkovich. A table of truths, the chess table of truths. It's a witness of tragic events happened long time ago, but now it's a witness of peace, peace among people, people who love an intellectual game that brought all minds around the world united and uh, loving one simple game, one complex game. A game that develops strategic thinking, memory, the ability to win and lose, the ability to respect your opponent. And I believe that that will continue forever. The chess will continue to bring us together. Again, soon as soon as. Great. So I want to I again thank Mr. Uh, Dvorkovich for contributing that clip for this event this morning, especially. Um, all right. So uh, Grant and Faina, do you want to? Just, you know, just Faina. Okay. Okay. So for me, it's really, as I told you, and I'll repeat once more, it's a big honor uh, to take part in uh, all this program. And... Uh, uh, what I'm feeling as a lawyer and as a chair of the Jewish community, it's not only denying uh, the Holocaust, which is uh, really a very bad, uh, a very bad step and very bad motion, but uh, uh, distortion, distortion of the Holocaust, which is quite popular. Uh, in uh, a lot of communities. So the people do not understand till the end what happened. So they try to explain uh, a Holocaust in very different ways. And uh, unfortunately, today, the distortion of uh, the Holocaust uh, is more, uh, uh, is more, how to say, makes a bigger impact on the society than denying the Holocaust, because to deny the Holocaust is just crazy. Everybody understands it. Where uh, 250,000 Jews disappeared from Lithuania. But uh, um, uh, to uh, not to 
uh, really to understand what does it mean this Holocaust and what does it mean that uh, children lost their childhood, that my parents did not uh, have any of uh, the school friends, uh, the people who were playing chess or uh, other games, they just disappeared. And um, uh, we, the Jewish community, we have a very big interest from many schools. They are coming to us to, uh, to learn how to do different Jewish food, uh, how to uh, prepare for holidays. Uh, we have such a so-called European passport and uh, the state support the education of the children from many schools. Uh, so I think that this table of truth will become the central part of uh, the education of the children who are coming from different schools and we can uh, show them uh, and tell them uh, what happened during the Holocaust and to show the piece of, uh, of um, a, a, a thing which uh, they can understand that somebody was sitting near this uh, chess table Somebody was playing chess and these people disappeared. They do not exist anymore. They were killed. And they, they were able to uh, transfer, to give this uh, table to their children, to their grandchildren, but they can't because they do not exist anymore. And to, to show such um, uh, uh, things, uh, to show it's like a part of uh, Jewish culture. You know that uh, in Lithuania, uh, it was very popular among the Jewish families uh, to uh, make sport training. Maccabi was a very uh, important um, organization in, in, in Jewish family, the same as Piano, for example, who did not play piano in Jewish family, it was a must, it was a part of the education. And chess, it's also, we can show and we can explain at the same time, not only the part of the culture, but also how did this culture disappear from the Lithuanian map and who is responsible for that. Uh, it, it wasn't so that one day, uh, 80 years ago, suddenly a neighbor came with uh, a knife or with pistol and start to kill his neighbor. No, it was a preparation. It was uh, there were uh, special organizations which were working on the ideology of, uh, of on the anti-Semitic ideology. That's what we can hear even today. Uh, during the, uh, uh, the demonstration of anti-vaxxers, uh, we could hear that uh, Jews are ruling the world. Uh, so we can hear it until today, even though the Jews do not exist anymore in Lithuania. We are a community of 5,000 people. So yep. uh, I am sure that it will be a very successful uh, uh, project uh, which uh, is not costful. Nobody should pay money uh, to play chess. We'll do the competitions uh, in the school, in our uh, Jewish Maccabi, in our Jewish uh, club, and the winners uh, would be able to play the um, last uh, game, the last competition on uh, this chess table, the chess table of truth. And after they finish that uh, uh, last game, they'll have to say that what they know about uh, Holocaust and to thank all the people, uh, Orlansky family, you, Sylvia Forte, who is talking about uh, uh, about what happened during the Holocaust, the truth, 
you rent um, uh, uh, Dudu, uh, all the people who are involved in this competition, they, they should mention these people. And it should be more and more uh, the people who support this final game uh, on the table of truth. And the name of the table of truth is very important as well, because for me, really, it's very painful that uh, there are some, pe there are people, there are people, of, there are politicians who can't accept uh, uh, the Holocaust as the reality, which happened many years ago. And until today, we have to prove somebody that it happened. So maybe this uh, such primitive way of uh, uh, explanation, maybe that will touch uh, the hearts and they'll understand uh, what really happened and how many people were killed without any guilt. So this, these are my thoughts on the table of truth. Thank you. Thank you, Faina. Um, we thank you uh, overwhelmingly for this uh, brilliant program. Uh, we think it will have um, a huge impact on, on the future of this, uh, of this issue. And, um, and uh, we believe that it will hopefully shape uh, the minds of, of youth and, and the community moving forward. Um, and I, we do promise uh, here at ICANN that we will do our best to uh, stand up to genocide and, and stand up for, for human rights. Um, as we move to the, to the close now, um, I do, we have two more, um, two more bits of, uh, business on the agenda. Um, but before we get to those two, those two last pieces, I, I do want to say that every person that has participated uh, in this live stream today really is a hero. Um, and I would like our audience to know what they face. I, I want to share, um, let me share my screen here real quick, if we can do it without too much uh, hassle. <clears throat> can everyone, uh, everyone see this? Let's see here. Hold on. Yes. Um, I want to draw your attention to this, this website. Uh, this is an example of the government of Lithuania, which has an open threat of criminal charges and constitutional charges against Grant Goshen for having exposed the murders of Jews by Lithuanians and the Lithuanian murderers. Um, so for participating with us today, each of our brave participants um, faces these kinds of uh, tactics and intimidations. Uh, when Lithuanians, when Lithuania uh, were freely able to murder Jews, they did so. And today their refuge is to uh, threaten and uh, intimidate. So uh, we will stand up to them. We will continue to send this message and to share the truth that we know and that we will not be intimidated. Um, we at ICANN call on free and democratic governments to understand what is happening inside Lithuania and how easily, unfortunately, um, the events of 1941 can be repeated anywhere around the world. Um, so today, uh, we can't think of anything better for the victims of uh, Holocaust. We can't make anything better for the victims of the Holocaust in Lithuania. Um, and so now we respectfully um, ask Actually, before sorry, before we ask Dudu, we're gonna we're gonna have you do the the Kaddish. But uh, before we get to that, we have a special presentation uh, for Sylvia. Um, hold on one moment here. Um, so Sylvia, I, I I do want to recognize that there are three uh, American cities um, that have honored you, and they have sent us certificates. Um, so here I want to show you, this is from the uh, city of Dover. Um, and Mayor Robin Christensen, who is uh, sending a certificate of recognition. Uh, the city of Dover sends its gratitude and appreciation for your passion, hard work and warrior spirit for continuing to fight against racism, anti-Semitism, Holocaust denial and the prevention of genocide. So thank you um, to Mayor Christensen and the city of Dover. Um, 
We have also from the city of Oxnard. Um, they have sent a nice uh, uh, resolution. This is Oxnard, California. I'll read the whereas is, it's a little long. Uh, whereas Sylvia Foti has been a spirited fighter against racism, anti-Semitism, Holocaust denial, and for the preservation prevention of genocide. And whereas Ms. Foti's humanitarian work provides support and service to members of our community. And whereas Ms. Foti's work has been featured and dispersed by worldwide media organizations and honored by many organizations. And whereas the city of Oxnard joins the many civic and government agencies who have recognized her work. Therefore, the city council of the city of Oxnard presents the certificate of recognition to Sylvia Foti and thanks her for her contribution in creating a better world for all. And in witness thereof, John Zaragoza, or sorry, yeah, John Zaragoza, mayor of the city of Oxnard, on behalf of the entire city council, have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the city of Oxnard to be affixed uh, to this uh, certificate. So thank you. Uh, uh, to the mayor of Oxnard and the city council. And finally, one more. Uh, this is a beautiful um, certificate of recognition from the city of Carson, also in California, uh, to Sylvia. Um, and this is a certificate of recognition presented to Sylvia Foti in recognition of your philanthropic work to combat racism, anti Semitism, Holocaust denial, and the prevention of genocide. The city of Carson is proud of your service and dedication towards this important endeavor. So Sylvia, these are three certificates for you. Um, thank you so much for your work and um, we'll mail these to you at your home. And um, so Sylvia, uh, thank you again. And I think Dudu, it is, um, it is your part of the program to uh, chant the Kaddish. I'll let you uh, take it away. You do your volume. Yeah. We're buried in the forests and uh, in guest chambers. Families who does not have anyone left to uh, say this uh, prayer for them. So we'll say the Kaddish for all those uh, Jews who were killed only because they were Jews. That was the only crime they committed. It gadal vit kadash me raba Bel madi verafi rutei viam lich malfutei viat smach pukanei vikarev mishikei. Behae hon viam a hon of hei de holbeit israel. Badalau vis man karibim wamein. Yehei shmei raba me voach la la mulol me al maya. It bar vish tabar vit par vit roman vit nasse. ויתהדהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהלהויתהל
originates in Lithuania. Um, you know, Dudu, Shulamit, uh, Faina, myself, um, Ariella, we are alive only because the Lithuanians didn't get to us. Um, we are the caliber of, we are the type of people that that the Lithuanians murdered. The 96.4% of, of Lithuanian Jews in the territory of Lithuania were murdered. And we on this program tonight are the example of the very, very few survivors. And that, that ladies and gentlemen, is another Lithuanian Jew winning an Emmy Award last night in the name of Lithuanian Jews everywhere. Let, let, let Ariella Walt Cohen stand as an example to the world of what we are and what we could have made Lithuania into if they hadn't killed us all. So Mazel Tov Ariella, um, it's just an incredible achievement. Back to you, Dylan. Thanks, Grant. Uh, so I just want to mention to everyone that uh, we have a, another event on September 26th um, where we will focus on um, a story uh, connecting uh, descendants of the Stutov uh, concentration camp. Um, I want to thank, again, everybody. Thank each of you. I'll, I'll unmute you all if you want to make comments. I want to thank each of you for uh, participating and um, I want to wish you a, all a Shana Tova. And we have Yom Kippur coming. So, Gamar Hatima Tova to all of you. And um, I, will, I will let you uh, yes. all say. Yeah. Dylan, Dylan, please let me. You know what? This period during Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, if what's happened on this live stream tonight isn't an example of reconciliation, of love and peace, of, of fellowship, then what is? I mean, here we on the screen, Sylvia Foti is in the center of the screen and we're all around her. And there is love and friendship and trust and openness. And that is the essence of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, repentance, peace, and love. So to everybody, well over the fast, may it be a wonderful new year. And final comment from me, Dylan is the CEO of ICANN. ICANN has expenses. Uh, I, Dylan is doing unbelievable work. I urge everybody to care about this. ICANN needs contributions. Over and out. All right. Thanks, thanks, Grant, and thank you uh, for the pitch. Uh, Dudu, did you want to say something before we, we close out? I just want to wish everybody a happy new year and... Uh, a happy, sweet, and healthy New Year to all of us. And thank you, Sylvia. Thank you for being there. And thank you for making what you do. And uh, just, it's, it's an amazing, amazing program. Thank you very, very much. My mother also said, thinks it's amazing. And uh, she sends everybody a happy New Year. Toda, toda raba. Faina? Happy New Year. Shana Tova, Matuka, the Hatimatova, and I hope that uh, next uh, year will be healthy, strong, even stronger than now, and we'll do everything to explain the world what happened in order not to happen it once more. So I uh, wish you all the best and thank you for this. Uh, for this program. Thank you. Thank you, Fine. Thank you, Faina. Thank you. Shalomit? Shanatova, but most of all, Sylvia, you are wonderful, unique, courageous. I am short of words. The best to you. Be happy and enjoy your years, the best years of your life. Thank you. Um, Sylvia, we'll, let, we'll let you say the, the last words and take us away. I, it's been a big honor to um, be in this show. It's incredible how far we have come on this journey and getting the story out. 
It's taken me over 20 years to get over my denial. And I hope that the rest of Lithuanians can do the same because to know the truth is to embrace what really happened. And um, that is the only way we can move forward toward a true healing. So, um, and I also thank God. Perfect. All right. Thank you. So again, thank you all. Um, and thank you for this program. Thank you, Shulamit. Thank you, uh, Faina. Dudu, it was great to see you and to hear you. And Grant, as always, thank you so much for uh, for leading us in this in this effort. Bye -bye. And thank you to our and thank you to our viewers. Um, if you're following us, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and uh, check us out on November. Uh, sorry, September 26th for our next event. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.